Welcome to Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Tomasz Chebiotowski, who's a Western classical musician turned photographer. And he's also the publisher of Fuji Love, a blog that embraces all things Fuji. In the last few months, Tomas has also launched the gorgeous Fuji Love magazine and is set to f have the first Fuji Love global photo walk on July 23rd. Now, I don't know when you, this is going to go live, but I love the fact that this man has just embraced everything about Fuji. So I had to have him on the show. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thanks so much, Sergio, for, for 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 having me on the show. It's 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 my honor. Thank you for the very very nice introduction. Uh, let me just just straight just correct one 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 only little thing. Please. So I didn't actually really turn photographer. I'm I'm both I'm both at the moment. So I'm still oh, an wonderful. I am still an active uh, classical pianist as well. I teach piano and I play. Uh, I'm freelancing myself as a as a chamber musician. Oh. You know the yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, twenty four hours a day, not enough, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> it's never enough, right? Um, so let's. I'm, I'm glad you corrected me, but it still intrigues me that uh, a musician uh, would take to photography. I mean, I, I see that bridge, and I can see like, okay, that makes sense. But tell me about your progression. How did you get started? Uh, uh, you know, from going from from being a musician to saying, "Hey, I'm going to do photography as well." What is what was your mindset? Well, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a long story. I'm not the I'm not the youngest guy. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's many many years already uh, behind me, and um, so I studied music, classical music. I studied piano yeah, as a young boy. You know, seven years or six years old. I started. My parents, you know, discovered my my talent whatever and they wanted me to 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 you know to study piano so uh, i learned uh, playing the piano classical classical piano and um, you know uh, there was nothing i mean also during the, the school the middle school during the when i started studying there was still not really much about photography going on my father um, for, uh, had a couple of cameras at home. He had analog cameras at home, and uh, you know, I was observing him doing. And from time to time, every now and then, I, I, I held the camera myself in my hands. But still, I didn't like get really involved into it till um, it was somewhere around. I, I don't remember exactly. I, I guess I was around 20, 22, 24 years old when I had an incredible, incredible luck. Um, I was. I went to Antarctica. I went to Antarctica on a two weeks cruise, you know, from Argentina around Antarctica and uh, Falkland Islands as a pianist. As a pianist, I was play I was basically a bar pianist for two weeks. <laughs> and uh, this was the moment when I thought, okay, well, I'm going to Antarctica. It wouldn't be the worst idea to have a camera with me, right? Because I can imagine it would be the last, the, the first and the last time I visit this place. So uh, that's how my photography journey, that's where my photography journey starts, you know. I, I, I took the camera with me, I came back home. It was a digital camera already. Um, there was no digital Fujis then, as far as I, I <laughs> as remember. This was a Canon PowerShot G2, little, little uh, compact camera. A nice camera, you know, for, for those times. So I came back and I started learning. I, I had no idea I had to find out I had the files on the card, I had to find out, oh, you have to download them to the computer, oh, you can work on them, yeah, you know, <laughs> so that's when it all started, and uh, and uh, since then, you know, um, it, it just started dragging me in, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, like you mentioned, there is, I also absolutely see so much parallels between making music and making images, you know, this is... Uh, it's basically it's it's a different medium. It's a different you know world, but it's basically the same thing. I mean, this is the way of expressing yourself without words, and uh, you know, uh, showing the world world what's what's going on, what's going on inside you. You know, what's what's on your mind. What, so there is so many parallels. I mean, I, I could I already start rambling. So you have to just interrupt. You Absolutely, know, because... no problem. <laughs> no problem. One of the things. One of the things that uh, we probably should really talk about. Uh, is your your first 
Fuji experience. Uh, you know, what are the, I, I don't want to I don't want to uh, lean too much on the idea that uh, you know a, a particular new camera is absolutely required for everybody to to make great images. I mean, I, I really cringe when I hear people say, "Hey, you've got to get the best, uh, latest, and best because that's what's going to make you a better photographer." And uh, you know, I, I've used uh, you know a very old camera for a long time. I've I've, uh, I've stuck with my Fuji X100T, and you know it's a few years old now already. Um, but tell us about your first experience with the Fuji and why it was so important for you to start with the Fuji camera system. Mm -hmm. So in my case my first Fuji camera was definitely not, you know, in terms of specifications and, you know, the features, was definitely not better than the camera I was uh, using before because the last camera I was using before uh, buying the Fujifilm X100S, which was my first Fuji, the last camera before that was uh, the Nikon D810. So <laughs> in terms of, you know, megapixels and all this, all this stuff, it was definitely a better camera. I was, I, I, th this was 2013, I guess, they announced the X100S. Um, at that time, I was doing really much street photography. So I, I live in Switzerland, the town of Lucerne, beautiful town, you know, and um, uh, being a musician, having a daily job also at the, at the College of Music, you know, there was less and less time for photography. Uh, but every every day, like this, is, it's nothing. You know, it's a typical story. Every day I was commuting, you know, be, be, between the home and and my workplace. So, so I was getting more and more involved in the street photography. And then I started a project, a black and white photography project of streets of Lucerne. It was called um, Lucerne Times, and started publishing, the, you know, photos online. And you know, after a couple of weeks of doing it. Nikon D810 was really getting too heavy, you know, as a camera which you could just drag with you, you know, back and forth, right? Yes, so, I can imagine. So on one of those walks, and it sounds really like a, like a, this cliche kind of story, you know, of getting into the Fuji, but it was really, it's, it's really a fact, the fact, right? So I, I got this idea, okay, I need something smaller. So on one of those walks through the town, I um, basically stood up in front of the pho photography shop, you know, one of the main streets of Lucerne. And, you know, I started looking at smaller cameras. And uh, I, was, I remember, like, like today, I was standing with the iPhone in my, in my hand, looking at the models, checking the reviews, right? Sure. And, then, and there it was. There, was, there it was, this small, lit, uh, we, a bit uh, strangely looking, you know, X100S, Fujifilm. I had no I had idea what that Fujifilm brand exists, but I had not real idea about uh, what kind of cameras they are. And they were so X100S, you know, Google reviews, and suddenly all those five-star reviews starts popping up. And I tell you, really honestly, I just went in, I, I bought the camera. I said, "Yeah, I just give it a go." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and today, you know, what is it? Uh, three, four years, and uh, <laughs> all my Nikon's are gone, and I have a uh, two, three Fujifilm bodies. Uh, behind me i think i don't know if you can see them yeah okay. so that, that's long story short right <laughs> awesome so you've made the the complete transition from uh heavier dslr cameras to the more lighter more nimble uh fuji cameras um and obviously you've you've got a do you have the new x pro 2s at all or the the xt2 perhaps that that just announced uh that uh, they were they were having some bodies out to f reviewers and things like that. I don't know if you got a, a copy of it or not. Um, did you get a copy? Yeah, I, I own the X Pro Two, okay. and uh, I I had uh, the possibility of testing the XT One for a, approximately twenty minutes. You know, so I don't own the XT. I mean, XT Two is not yet actually it's not yet available. It's not right? Yet, yeah, right. Yeah, but I own the X Pro Two. This is my um, yeah. Okay. Up, you know the the. Flagship, the flagship Fuji camera. Film camera. Yes. So, did, you you went from an X one hundred S to the X Pro two. What kinds of things were you were you noticing about using the different different body? Was it was it a, was a significant different from from the X one hundred S, or is it just sort of like a, a natural progression for you? It's it's both in a way. I mean, what I like about the whole you know Fuji Fuji Sys Fuji X system is that. I mean, at least for me, you know, 
once you start using one of those cameras with all the upgrades, with all the you know innovations they are bringing, you kind of feel at home. I mean, so far it has been this way, and I like it about the system. So even you know um, uh, photographing with the X100 line, one of those cameras, and then uh, actually the X100 line is closer to the X Pro 2 line than you know the XT line because this is this kind of rangefinder, you know, form factor, yeah. and uh, of course the the big difference is that on a camera like X Pro 2. It's an interchangeable lens camera, so you can put different glass on it, right? On X100, you have the fixed 23 millimeter lens, which is also great. This is for another topic, maybe, you know, this limiting yourself. I, mean, I, I love this idea, actually. And to be honest, today I'm working much with the X Pro 2. Yeah, there is, of course, there's a jump in, in, in quality. You can notice it. This is the, it's not only the megapixels, it's the entirely new technology in the sensor. You know, I don't, I don't really know all the, you know, deepest sure. available details, but uh, the difference in quality is, is visible. You can see it. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say, I'm still walking very, very, very often just with the 23 millimeter lens on my X Pro 2. So actually, I kind of like this field, you know, this angle, this of view, and uh, yeah, I stick to it very often. Very nice. Well, that's great to hear. Okay, let's jump into talking about your baby, Fuji Love. How did you get started with Fuji Love? I mean, it's a it's a website and it's now a magazine, and then hopefully on the twenty third it'll be a movement uh, around the world where people take out their Fuji cameras or just go out on a photo walk uh, and photo make photographs. Uh, talk to us a little bit about Fuji Love. Yeah, so it's funny the the name uh, Fuji Love. I mean, it kind of. Uh, uh, contains really my, my, my feelings from the beginning to the, you know, I really fell in love with these cameras. And uh, it was not that long after I uh, purchased the first X100S, uh, then back then in 2013. I mean, like, honestly, I was so impressed with this, with the, you know, character of the images, with the whole feeling, with, with what it was doing to my own photography, you know, how I felt my own photography was benefiting from this, from the system. I felt so enthusiastic and impressed that I just really felt deep inside that I want to share it with the rest of the world, just to share this enthusiasm, you know. So, you know, I, both of my parents, they are now retired, but they are um, computer programmers, and, you know, they, all my life there were computers around me. There were, there were always keyboards around me, piano keyboard and the computer keyboard. I was just <laughs> turning around my chair, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, setting, setting up a blog... It's not a big problem for me. So I, I just had to do it. I, I, bought, I found the domain, fujilove.com, and I started blogging myself, you know, about the cameras, sharing my, photog my own photography, sure. and, um, and, you know, and looking for people on the, you know, today, you know it very well, it's so easy nowadays, looking on people online, sharing this enthusiasm. And, um, yeah, you know, it was a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and I just noticed the traffic going up, pretty significantly and pretty quickly and uh, yeah in you know uh, uh, because of this willingness to share the enthusiasm also to share the you know the passion with the others i started looking for other people interested in writing about fuji cameras about the photography uh, you know being done with those cameras so sl slowly slowly step by step i started you know kind of uh, building up a team and I remember in the very beginning, I, I ended up with five people. One of them, and, and uh, uh, I was really, really happy about it, was uh, probably you know the guy, Take Kayo, Big Head Taco. Mm -hmm. It's a um, guy living in Canada, a really nice guy and really, you know, a knowledgeable guy. And, but, and uh, so uh, I had f five people in the beginning. I remember Gary Perlmutter, Bobby Lane was there, and uh, a couple of more guys. And we started, you know, we had a schedule started publishing articles you know on a, on a regular basis and the traffic conti continued to grow you know so um, yeah and this was uh, the Fuji Life went online on in March 2015 so it's uh, what is it now uh, one year and four months ago right. I would or something like that um, and uh, yeah you know step by step one year Many, many people, the Facebook groups and stuff, the whole community started to, fam people starting recognizing each other, you know, communicating with each other. With it. Just, I love it, you know, the beautiful community, nice people exchanging 
open and, and willing to share information and so on. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, yeah, and it was uh, this year, I, I guess around also March this year, also actually based on suggestions from some of the members of the community, you know, I came up with the idea of the, of the Fujilab magazine. Mm. I just thought, you know, one of my favorite magazines, you know, which I use and I still read is uh, Lenswork by Brooks Jensen. Yes. Beautiful, simple magazine with abs- absolute focus on the photography. That's right. So I, I can honestly say it was kind of my inspiration in terms of, you know, how uh, visual, how the, maga- how, how the magazine should look. I, you know, no distractions, photographs taking the center stage. And uh, yeah, and this was the impulse, you know, and then all, it, all those uh, factors, everything came together. I decided to order eight you know articles from 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 the experts fujifilm experts damien lovegrove and you know the guys who really know yes. this system extremely well and i put together the first uh, first issue of the fuji Love magazine reaction was really really nice of the community and uh, we are enjoying a nice group of subscribers already now, today now the the magazine is uh, online only or is it can be you can i i recall something where I read somewhere that you you're offering a print version as well. Well, this it's not yet available. This we okay. are still I'm still playing with this idea. Um, I at the moment it's a PDF magazine. Okay. In a one two months time, we'll be also rolling out a, a, an application, you know, for the iPhone and for the Android, which is also a digital thing. So the people will be able to download, you know, it directly to their iPhone from the from the store, you know, from the App Store. Uh, I'm still you know, playing with the printed magazine idea. The problem with that is, not, uh, of course, that um, the smaller the amount of copies you produce, More the, big, the higher price of the single individual copy is. That's right. So I, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm talking with some people and I have to find out <laughs> if, if it just makes sense. I mean, uh, of course, if you're selling a magazine of 100,000 copies, then then it probably also the cost of the production go, go lower and, and all of that. Right. But who knows what the future brings? I mean, I, you know, I'm pre-visualizing different things <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love your enthusiasm for, for these projects, uh, Tomas. Really amazing. Um, let's talk about your latest uh, idea, which is the Global Photo Walk. Uh, talk to us about it. It's coming up on July 23rd. As I said, I don't know when this will air, uh, we're talking on July 20th, and this goes out uh, on the 23rd. You you have a, what's what are you calling the Fuji Love Global Photo Walk? Talk to us about it. What what is it all about? Exactly. Uh, you know, from the very beginning, um, uh, all this my, my enthusiasm about Fuji cameras, about you know, uh, this whole system, and what it did to my photography. Actually, what sits at the very, very bottom is, my, of course, my passion to photography itself. Like you said at some point, I mean, at the end, which camera you're using does not matter. I always argue a little bit with this because I notice this impact which these actual cameras had on my photography. So there is something also, of course, about the camera itself. I mean, if the camera is, impro- is you know, if, if I'm benefiting from using this particular camera and I see my, my photography improving... I have to also, you know, uh, right. give some give some credit to the camera sure. itself. So, but at the very bottom is, you know, photography. And uh, I feel like, you know, uh, we are all living these very, very extremely busy lives, and uh, people people need some kick. People need inspiration. People, and I love, you know, I, I'm struggling with this myself. I have a family. I have my daily job, and so on. I need this kick very often. But I feel like, you know, sharing and and kicking others people. Bats to you know to grab their cameras, go on the street. So the global Fuji Love uh, photo walk. This is the first edition now. It's exactly now on, on Saturday, taking place in over. At the moment, I think it's over sixty locations all around the globe. Fantastic. Um, it's just this. I, I I I want I want you all. I want people you know to grab their Fujis, and it, you can also visit us with the Canon with the Nikon. It's no problem. You know, just grab the cameras, meet up. Uh, make new friends, you know, look at each other's work, talk about photography and uh, just spend a couple of, of, uh, of nice hours, you know, on the streets and, and share, your, share your work. That's the, the best way, to, you know, to, to, to improve our photography and I'm, I'm convinced that people participating in this Fuji, uh, Fuji Love uh, Global Photo Walk are this kind of people. They want 
they want to improve their own photography. That's why they will be there on the on the street with with, with the group. Fantastic. Uh, and you'll have I'll have information about the Global Photo Walk, a link back to your site where you talk about all of this, where people can sign up and things like that, uh, whether it's local or you have to travel a little bit to get to the photo walk, uh, you know, do definitely go out there and make friends, talk, talk shop. I mean, we love talking shop and as right. photographers, we, we, we talk cameras and lenses and uh, f-stops and, and whatever else all the time. This is a great opportunity to go beyond that and talk about your art, talk about what you're seeing, what you're not seeing, challenge each other and grow. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, really Absolutely. the point of yeah. all of this is not to, you know, you know, compare who's got the better, uh, you know, camera body, you know, or lens or whatever. It's to go out there and, and see what you can do with what you have. And I think that's phenomenal. I love, I love what, what you're doing, Tomas. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us a little bit about Food You Love. Um, it's been an honor, really, to, to connect with you and be able to get your story and figure out exactly how people can benefit from going to Fuji Love and reading the articles, um, following the tutorials, following the, the kinds of insight that people have uh, about using their cameras. I mean, because Fuji has such a great array of cameras now. I mean, it's not just the exactly. X100T, which I have, but the X-Pro2, the X-T2, which is coming, uh, or the X-T1. I'm sure you have lots of articles about the, using the X-T1 on your website. I think this is what people are aching for, a really wonderful avenue to go to, to, to learn how to use what they have. And it's phenomenal. So thank you for doing all of that. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks so much. And just uh, before we wrap up, I would like to, I have a little surprise for your listeners, for, your, for the viewers of your show. I would like to offer one yearly subscription to the Fujilab magazine to a randomly chosen, it's up to you how you, how you handle and organize it, one yearly subscription to the Fujilab magazine to a randomly chosen listener and viewer to, to, to your show. Fantastic. Wow. What a, what, what a treat that it's going to be for whoever is going to win that. <laughs> I will make sure somebody definitely wins that. We'll make it possible for that person to perhaps make a place a comment. Uh, you know, maybe let's do this. Let's have somebody, uh, anybody really listening to this uh, all the way through. I mean, we're already 20 minutes into this conversation. Oh, OK. Um, but okay. <laughs> but if, if you if you listen all the way through, here's the deal. Uh, go to Fuji Love. Uh, pick any any post you love that you read, come back to Tiffin Box, place that link on Tiffin Box, and we will gauge you know where you've been, what you've read, what your comment is, and then we'll pick a winner. All right? Make that's it very, great. Very, yeah. very, very simple. So thanks for doing that. I really, you know, that's quite a surprise to me. I just didn't even know you were going to do that, man. Thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> well, it's been, it's been a pleasure, Tomas. Uh, we've just talked with Tomas Chebiatovsky, who's the producer, publisher of Fuji Love. And uh, I mean, it's a global photo walk that's taking place on the 23rd. Do check it out. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sejan.